I've seen people who, you know, I've actually had clients who have not lost weight in three straight weeks, and then the fourth week they drop three pounds, right? So a lot of times what can happen is, is that we're just not patient enough to actually do you know, our weight loss protocol. We think that we should be losing weight every single day or every single week. And while it's definitely recommended that you lose about 0.5 to a pound per week, um, if you don't lose weight right away, don't freak out. Stick to your calorie deficit and keep going. Hey, what's going on? Shane, it's Shane Hubbard Fit. Today, we're gonna be talking all about reverse dieting. And as the name suggests, you are essentially dieting in reverse. So instead of dropping calories little by little to lose body fat, you're actually going to be adding calories to your nutrition in a very specific way to gain muscle mass, right? So the idea is that we're trying to gain muscle mass with very little fat mass. That's one of the reasons why we're gonna be having a very specific way to do things, which we'll cover in a minute. All right, before we get started, let me know how many calories a day you are currently eating so that you know if you're in the right place to start reverse dieting. So the very first thing that I wanna talk about is understanding why it's so important that you do it in a very specific way. Um, typically speaking, when you hear about bulks and cuts, you hear, you know, bulking is when you eat as many calories as you can to bulk up to build muscle and cutting is when you reduce your calories to then, you know, lose body fat. And while that is one way that bodybuilders do it, it's not a very intelligent way for doing it for the average person who probably already has a lot of body fat to lose. And if you're somebody who has a high body fat percentage, you wanna make sure that when you reverse diet, you do it very specifically and, and have a very specific way that you do it so that you minimize fat gain, but also maximize muscle gain, okay? So um, let's talk about when to reverse diet to start things off. The, the first thing that I typically get is like, how do I know when to reverse diet? Okay, here's a good example. Let's say you're already eating pretty low calories. Like I would consider low calories for, for women anywhere, anything below 1400, and for men probably anything below 1600. Now, if you're already doing that and your weight isn't going down, you're not losing body fat, or even if you are, at some point you're gonna get to such a low number that you're really not gonna be able to sustain that number. So typically speaking, I'll have women reach out to me and say, I'm eating a thousand calories, I'm not losing weight, what the hell is going on, what am I supposed to do? This happens a lot when we do things like crash diets or we dramatically cut calories or we, even if we just cut calories a little bit where we're already low in how much we have to eat in order to lose body fat, you can get, to down, get down to like a thousand calories and not lose any more weight. And so at that point, the logical reasoning would be, okay, you have to cut calories again, you know, because you're, you're, not, you're no longer in a calorie deficit. So the problem with that is, is that if you're already at a thousand calories and you're trying to cut calories again, you're gonna get down to like 700, 800 calories, and that's just not sustainable. So what's important to understand is that if you're already super low calories, you might have to do something called reverse dieting. And unfortunately, a lot of the advice out there for losing body fat is to slash calories a lot more than you really need to. Um, and some, for some people, they should have reverse dieted first, possibly raising their metabolism through strength training, more activity and proper nutrition, and then cut the fat. But you know, we don't live in a world that's perfect and, and not all the information out there is going to be exactly what you need to hear, which is why I'm glad you're here watching this video. But that's one example. Your calories are already really low, you're not losing any more weight, and you need to ramp your calories back up. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to losing body fat is you wanna be able to eat as many calories as you can comfortably, but still lose weight. If you're trying to lose weight, that's that should be your goal because slashing calories from the very beginning is not a great strategy because eventually you're gonna to have to cut calories again. So the slow and small method is usually what I recommend for just about every single person because it gives you more opportunity to lose more fat over time. Okay, remember that fat loss is more of a marathon than it is a sprint. You can definitely lose weight quickly in a short amount of time, but that should not be your long-term goal if you have a lot of body fat to lose. You should be thinking about how do I sustain this over you know, three, six, you know, possibly even 12 months if you have a lot of fat to lose. So that's the first example. The next example would be if you're trying to build muscle and you're trying to minimize the amount of fat you gain while you do that. Now, you don't even have to be somebody who's eating really low calories. You could be somebody who's at sort of a maintenance amount of calories and you wanna focus more on building muscle right now, but you, you're sort of worried about gaining fat at the same time. Um, this is typically more uh, of a concern for women, at least in my experience, um, gaining fat by eating more calories, uh, which is why I have a sort of a protocol for that. But that would be another example of 
when you should think about reverse dieting. So again, if your calories are already really low and you already have a lot of body fat to, still to lose, then this is a good opportunity to try something like reverse dieting. All right, so now that we've talked about when you should reverse diet, let's talk about how to do it. This is gonna take up the majority of the video because it is sort of a step-by-step -step process. And you wanna make sure that you have certain things in line so that when you do this, you're doing it very intelligently so that you maximize the amount of lean mass you gain, so muscle mass essentially, and minimize the amount of fat mass that you gain, right? Because if you just add 500 calories back to whatever you're already eating, that's probably gonna be more calories than you need. And so some of that's gonna be turned into fat because again, remember, if you consume more calories than you burn, then that is going to be stored as fat. So we wanna minimize the amount of fat that we gain when we do something like a reverse diet. Okay, so the very first thing you have to understand is that you need to be at a, what's called a weight maintenance for about three to four weeks, if not a little bit longer. The problem that sometimes uh, you know people will run into is they'll not lose weight for a week, and they're like, "Oh, you know, my metabolism is slow," and or you know, I've, my metabolism is plateaued. It's like that's really not a long enough amount of time to be able to tell if your weight has sort of plateaued or come to a maintenance. You need at least three to four straight weeks of absolutely no change on the scale for you to even consider whether or not you should either drop calories again or you know make some kind of other change. I've seen people who, you know, I've actually had clients who have not lost weight in three straight weeks and then the fourth week they drop three pounds, right? So a lot of times what can happen is, is that we're just not patient enough to actually do you know, our weight loss protocol. We think that we should be losing weight every single day or every single week. And while it's definitely recommended that you lose about 0.5 to a pound per week, um, if you don't lose weight right away, don't freak out. Stick to your calorie deficit and keep going. But let's say that for the sake of reverse dieting that you've been pretty much the same weight for six straight weeks and you've been really adherent to your calories, like you've really, really tracked them very closely. Um, you've been tracking your weight and you legitimately haven't lost any weight in three to four weeks and you're thinking about, okay, well maybe now's a good time to reverse diet because my calories are already really low, I can't go any lower with my calories and, and it be sustainable for keeping the weight off, let's consider reverse dieting. So that would be the first thing you have to check. You have to actually make sure that one, your weight is at a maintenance or a plateau, so to speak, and two, your calories are already really low, so it's a good time to reverse diet and try to raise your metabolism back up very slowly, okay? So that's the next thing that you, you, that's probably the second most important thing, other than identifying when is a good time to reverse diet, is making sure that you add calories slowly. Now, I get a lot of questions about, well, okay, I checked online and my, my you know, weight maintenance or my calorie maintenance is uh, 1,500 calories, and you've only been eating 1,100 calories, so that's a 400 calorie difference. So you might think, well, the calculator online told me my calorie maintenance is 1,500, should I just be eating 1,500 right away? No, because you gotta remember, if your weight has stalled at the amount of calories you're consuming, whatever that is, that is your calorie maintenance now. A common misconception is that a calorie maintenance is a static number. It's actually a very dynamic number. And if your weight is stalling at a very specific amount of calories, that is now your new calorie maintenance. So technically speaking, if we're using the example that we've been using, you've been eating 1,100 calories and you haven't lost weight in six straight weeks, that's a good example of a adaptation to a new calorie amount, which is now your maintenance. So your maintenance now is 1100 calories. So how should you add calories back to a calorie maintenance that's been proven by your weight pretty much staying stable for six straight weeks? Well, the amount of calories that you wanna add back is about 15 to 100, depending on how active you are. So if you're sort of more sedentary or light activity, you really haven't got a decent exercise routine down, you're not following some of the basics like step counts and weight training, then you really only wanna add 50 calories more at a time. Now, how do you know when to add more calories or when to uh, add less calories? Well, that's gonna depend on your weight. So let's say that day one of your reverse dieting, uh, you add 50 calories to that number we had before, which is 1100. So you have a, a 1,150 calories now. So you eat that for two straight weeks and your weight pretty much doesn't change at all. That's awesome, that's sort of the gold standard. That's what we wanna be able to see. Um, if that's the case, then the next week, after that, after the first two weeks, you would add 50 calories again. So you're slowly adding a small amount of calories depending on when your, your weight changes, right? If we were to add 300 calories, let's say, to your, your maintenance, your, your existing maintenance, and your weight would spike immediately up, there's a good chance that you're overeating at that point. So we sort of want to add calories based on the 
rate at which our weight increases. Now, if you're eating 50 calories more at a time, your weight's really not gonna increase that much, at least not initially. It's gonna be a, a much more gradual upward trend. So that's okay, right? There's gonna be some weight gain in the form of water and muscle if you're doing all the right things with uh, resistance training. So there is gonna be some weight gain, but you have to remember that that weight gain is going to be muscle mass. And when it's muscle mass, over time, as you build more and more muscle, it'll be easier to drop body fat when you decide to cut calories again, right? Because the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn at rest or essentially doing nothing. Your metabolism is a lot stronger, is a lot faster. Now, if you notice that you're, um, like let's say you do 100 calories more, like maybe you're already resistance training and you're already you know, uh, you know, doing sort of like the step count goals and you're doing all the right things on the exercise side of things and you increase by 100 calories and your weight, you know, is going up too fast, then you just dial it back down, right? So it, it, again, it's always a trial and error process. We're making educated guesses to know how many calories to eat. But honestly, when I've seen people add 50 calories to their, you know, intake um, slowly and, and, and they do it diligently, there's not a lot of weight gain. And the weight gain that is happening as a result is typically water weight uh, if it's if it's happening because fat weight is just not going to accumulate that quickly it takes weeks and weeks and weeks in order to see a large fat increase all right again one of the things to keep in mind is you really only want to increase your calories when your weight is stable so back to that same example if i eat 50 calories more every single day for two straight weeks and my weight pretty much stays the same you know give or take you know normal fluctuations in weight then now's a good time to add another 50 calories. And I would always recommend that you do the minimum first, especially if this is your first time doing it, because when you do the minimum, you're going to have the minimum amount of fat gain if you really stick to your, you know, your calorie intake. So for example, I was eating about 2,300 calories and I decided to do a little reverse dieting. So I added uh, 50 more calories and now I'm eating 2,350 calories. And I noticed my weight went up a little bit, but you know, not anything that would uh, make me believe that it's just pure fat weight. It's mostly just water fluctuations. And so after two weeks, when my weight sort of stabilized, I increased by another 50 calories and I went very, very slow. And I'm getting to a point now where I'm eating more and more calories, but my weight really isn't changing that dramatically. And if it is changing in any way, shape or form, I can feel it be more you know, water weight because of you know, how I feel and just noticing the increases on the scale. So I'm not worried about it being fat. And again, even if it was a little bit of fat, because you're, you're never gonna have a perfect, like only gaining water, only gaining muscle, gaining zero fat, unless maybe you're like extremely brand new to weightlifting and you're just hyper adapting. Um, there's always gonna be a little bit of fat, but remember, if you gain a little bit of fat, it's easy to take a little bit of fat off. It's what we're concerned about mostly is gaining a lot of fat or gaining more fat than we've gained through muscle mass, right? We wanna be able to gain more muscle, minimize fat gain, and then sort of keep our weight stable and, and something that we're happy with, right? After that, what you wanna be able to do is, again, just keep that period going as long as you can. So reverse dieting in terms of like a schedule, I would say do it for three months, right? Um, within the first month, you'll be able to tell whether or not the amount of calories you're adding back in is too much, or maybe you could add a little bit more, right? You'll be able to see based on your weight. So between how your weight reacts to the calories you consume and the amount of calories you add back into your uh, nutrition, you'll be able to tell whether you're going too fast or too slow, right? And I, I honestly don't believe that you can go too slow. I think it's actually smarter to go slower than it is to try to go faster because you're not going to gain muscle very quickly, again, unless you're absolutely brand new to weight training. People that are extremely brand new to weight training, like you've really never stayed on a consistent plan, are going to hyper adapt and gain a lot of muscle very quickly and then it's gonna sort of uh, you know, taper off uh, and sort of the rate at which you gain muscle is gonna slow down. But if you're sort of somebody who's been lifting weights for a while, your calories have been low and you haven't really or you have been uh, weightlifting a long time, the rate at which you're going to build muscle is gonna be slow. So there's no reason to add calories very quickly to your nutrition when you're reverse dieting. Another thing that I wanna point out is that physical, physical activity must stay consistent, right? Because remember, it's if we're raising calories and we're not also paying attention to our calorie output, right? If we're eating more, but we're not exercising at least the same amount, then there's a good chance that if we do overeat you know, calories, like a, you know, a substantial amount, then that's going to be body fat, right? We can't decrease calories and, or decrease activity and increase calories because now we've got too large of a surplus. So that's why it's so important to stay with your weight training routine, 
And if you're not already already on one, then I would highly recommend getting on at least a body weight workout program, maybe a HIT program. Uh, if your gym is closed right now, if your gym is open, then stick with your weight training program and make sure that you're getting at least seven to 10,000 steps a day to keep your activity up so that the minimum amount of surplus that you have goes mostly towards muscle mass, all right? So again, it doesn't take a whole lot of calories over your maintenance to help you build more muscle, especially if you want to minimize fat gain. So make sure that you're doing resistance training, you know, three to four times a week is sort of a, a good little middle ground. Make sure that, you know, five to six days a week that you're getting your step count at least 7,000 steps. And you can do that through walks or, you know, you can do that through just being more active throughout the day. The way in which you get your step counts is totally up to you. It could be through cardio. It could be through daily walks. It could be through swimming. It could be through riding a bike. I mean, you have lots of options when it comes to how many steps you get and how active you are. Um, I like to always say go for a walk because it's the simplest thing that you could possibly do, right? You spend 10 minutes walking and you get a thousand steps. So again, aim for seven to 10,000 steps a day. Try to do some form of resistance training, even if that's body weight training, three to four times a week. And I would say that if you're relatively more intermediate or even advanced uh, in terms of lifting weights and being, you know, doing resistance training, then I would even recommend maybe, you know, five or six days a week because you can get away with a little bit more frequency when you're just working with body weight because the intensity is going to be a lot lower uh, in most regards. So anyway, that is reverse dieting 101. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a nice thumbs up. And then if you have any questions about reverse dieting, please put them in the comment section down below. I'd love to help answer some of the uh, maybe less obvious parts of reverse dieting. And then don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos that go in depth on very important topics to help you with your fitness. All right, so that is my video today. Thanks a ton for watching. I will see you in a future video. Look at my history. I'm trying to see what's different from that guy in the rich and me. The only thing I see is custom miles from Tiffany and some gunners that'll hit you.